Welcome back to the Naval News segment. Uh, today we're going to begin with some big news out of Germany and Norway. They are building brand new submarines over there in Europe, and they're going with a radical new design. I want you to take a look at the new Type 212 Charlie Delta. Yeah, this is both the Charlie and the Delta, all in one. Um, it's going to be 240 feet long, conventionally powered AIP submarine. This is a big girl for a conventionally powered submarine. But what I really want you to pay attention to is look at the new shape. It looks pyramidic or like a triangle, right? They're losing the round shape. And I went to somebody who is a naval engineer, an architect, if you will, naval architect. And I asked her, what is the deal with this new shape? What is this? And apparently this is the new hotness for active evasion. Very similar to a story we talked about last week with Lockheed Martin stealth submarine that was never actually built. Same principle applies. The round submarine hull, the albacore shape outer hull is one of the worst designs for reflecting active. Well, it's good for reflecting active is the problem. It's bad for the submarine because at some point on that curve is pointing right back to the transmitter. It may not be very big, but there's going to be a longitudinal line that goes right back to the source. With this design, you don't have that. You don't have that curve. There's only one direction. There's only one range, and it's very close to the submarine where you can ping this angle and it bounces right back at you. The purpose of these angles is to make the sound bounce, the active ping that hits the submarine. According to this naval architect, not me, she told me, that it's going to bounce that sound up to the surface and from the surface it will be uh, bounced back down to the bottom and that will repeat a number of times depending on range before it gets back to the active transmitter. Yeah, this, this is a much more stealthy design than a round haul. Now, she also told me the, the purpose of this this is not a good design for the pressure hall. They're going to be weak points anytime you have a joint. So what she thinks is happening is there is a round pressure hall for the people that is covered by an outer hall, like a dual hall submarine from the Cold War that has these sharp angles. And if you pay attention to the Astute, a submarine that's been built for years, the Royal Navy figured this out a long time ago. and didn't tell anybody like they should have. We're friends. You got to let us know these things. But this looks like an astute and a number of other submarines that have taken advantage of this. But they didn't tell us Americans we're still building round Virginias. Well, that's probably why we're not going to be building Virginias much longer. We're going to we're building a new SSN X, you know, next generation submarine is on the drawing board right now being produced because we want to take advantage of this new discovery new for the United States. Apparently, UK and Germany and Norway, they all figured this out a while ago. They didn't tell us Americans. How dare they? Don't they know who we are? <laughs> anyway, so this is the new hotness, the Type 212 Charlie Delta going to Norway and Germany. Norway's getting four. Germany's getting three because they're cheap bastards. From the piece written by Mr. H.I. Sutton, credit to NavalNews.com. Check this out. Uh, for more stories like this, go to NavalNews.com. Mr. Sutton says a radical new stealth submarine type 212 Charlie Delta will be much larger. Submarines rely on stealth to maintain the element of surprise and escape threats. For decades, this has focused on reducing noise emitting by the submarine. A resurgence in the use of active sonar to locate submarines now means that stealth measures will be required. German submarine builder TKMS appears to be the first to apply a radical stealth shaping along the entire submarine. The reference I made to the astute isn't along the top, the entire submarine. Uh, the German Navy, uh, Deutsche Marine, operates a fleet of advanced submarines. The Type 212 Alpha were the first in the world to introduce the fuel cell AIP, air independent power. Now two of the newer models, Type 212 CDs, will be added to their fleet. As well as being over 10 years newer than their current boats, they're also much larger. This should bring with improved capabilities, especially stealth. The Type 212 Charlie Delta is a joint project between Germany and Norwegian governments. The order for six submarines, two for Germany, four for Norway, is worth around 5.5 billion euros. That's a lot of euros. Uh, German shipbuilder TKMS is working with Norwegian partner uh, Kongsberg, the first boat will be laid down in 2023 and delivered to Norway in 2029. 
Excellent. Uh, Germany should get its first boat at 2032. Outstanding. So really big news coming out of Europe there. Let's talk about the shape real quick from the piece, because this is super important. This is relatively new, new discovery for submarine building. This is why they're going this way. There are two basic modes of sonar, says we're going to give us a little sonar lesson here with the submarine might face. Active sonar is when someone broadcasts noise and then listens for echoes that bounce off submarines. Passive sonar is simply listening for any sound that it's being emitted from other submarines, such as pumps, engines, water flow over surfaces. For years, passive sonar has been king of sonar warfare, submarine warfare, because it doesn't give away the, the predator's position. Yeah, you just be very passive. Uh, however, uh, this is shifting as submarines have become quieter. The effectiveness of passive sonar has decreased. To detect the quietest submarines, active uh, may be needed. Therefore, being invisible to active sonar can provide a tactical advantage, hence the shape of the new submarines that are coming out. Many submarines should uh, already use layers of special rubber tiles and patches known as anechoic uh, coatings to reduce the amount of sound that would be reflected. Now, the problem with the anechoic coatings is that the deeper you go, the more they get, get compressed. And if you take anything that's absorbent, it needs to have space in the, in the, in the medium to be um, to, to absorb energy. The, the more you compress anything, the more dense it gets. And the more dense it is, the more reflective it becomes. So anechoic coating was a good start, but it wasn't as good as we had hoped it was, even though we use it on all of our submarines because it's better than bare metal. It's better than that. Okay, a regular submarine with a hull that's syndrilic or syndrilical in the cross section will reflect incoming sonar waves from almost every direction. Like I said, because it's round, one of those degrees of the curve is pointing right back to the source, just like he says here. A flat surface, however, is larger than the length of the incoming sonar's wavelength will reflect the sound in a narrow beam. This is the same basic principle used on stealth aircraft. Naturally, it's not quite as simple as that. The exact water conditions can affect the path the sound takes, and the wavelength of the sonar is also a factor. That is very important. So the wavelength of your transmission needs to be less than half, if I'm doing the math right, less than half of the length of the submarine that you see. And keep in mind, you're not always looking at a submarine broadside. It could be at an angle, so it appears shorter than it actually is. That's called angle of incidence. Anyway, uh, the race to be first. Uh, actually, the Type 212 Charlie Delta is not the first submarine to be designed with this facet outer hull like this. All the way back in World War II, when active sonar was still in its infancy, German designers planned the Type 29H U-boat. We talked about that last week and has had basic angled sides and its sail. It was never built, however, and lacking artificial intelligence available today, it is questionable how, as to how effective the Type 29 would have actually been because they just simply didn't have the computing process <laughs> power we have now. U.S. firm Lockheed has experimented with similar stealth concepts. These are byproduct of developing the famous F-117 Alpha Nighthawk stealth fighter. Around 1980, they even proposed a stealth submarine. We talked about that last time. Anyway, great story by Mr. Sutton. Pardon me. Um, really, really good breaking news. And I'm glad to see Norway and Germany getting some new submarines. Germany's really struggled with the 212, maintaining them, keeping them seaworthy. They got through that. They're seaworthy again. But what do you guys think of this? What do you guys think of this new design? Is it going to work? Am I completely off my rocker? <laughs> Let's see. The Ravens Brigade says, I hope Dutch uh, pro procure subs with this new shape. We're in the middle of procuring four new ones uh, that weigh 3,500 gross. That's a pretty good size submarine. Ravens says, oh, I, yeah, I just read that one. Uh, wanted to have a domestic industry, not wanting anything made in Britain. Hmm. Yeah. I hope they get the speed up. Yeah, yeah, the speed is going to be a problem for this. I can see that already because she's so big. Now, those energy cells, if they, you know, fill this extra length with energy cells, which would be counterintuitive, but they, they could have enough energy cells to keep their speed up. But still, they're going to need to have a big propeller on the back of this thing if they want to maintain you know, say 30 knots, you know, but I really think the missions for Norway and Germany are not blue water missions at the moment. I really think they're thinking about littoral shallow waters or narrow waters, like a Baltic sea compared to the Atlantic ocean is more narrow than the Atlantic ocean is. I think they're more thinking like that right now. 
Uh, what do I think of the A26 sale? I've seen concept drawings of the A26 sale. It looks really cool. We'll see what it actually looks like after they build one of them. Um, but yeah, it looks interesting. What about the saltwater powered engine? I don't know. I haven't heard about that one. Uh, Sailor says it's interesting uh, how similar it looks to the stealth radar design. Yeah, and that's what H.I. Sutton was saying, is this is based on the same principle as the original stealth fighter, the one that came out in the uh, was announced to the world around the first Cold War. All right, very cool stuff. All right, let's uh, take a moment to talk about Australia one more time here, because not only are they going to be getting nuclear submarines uh, in a joint venture between the United States and the United Kingdom, uh, but they're also going to be buying some Tomahawks and putting them on their air warfare defense frigates. So they're going ham. They know that the threat is real from China and they're preparing for it um, as much as Taiwan is pre preparing for it. But let's read from the piece uh, from the war zone written by Thomas Nudick and Joseph Trevick. Australia to buy Tomahawk cruise missiles and will get at least eight nuclear submarines. They write, the Australian government will buy the U.S.-made Tomahawk cruise missile for the Royal Australian Navy, which will integrate it onto its Hobart-class destroyers. The announcement of the planned purchase of these long-range strike weapons comes as Australia works to bolster its military capabilities, especially in the maritime domain. To face the increasingly powerful China, this also comes at a day when the country revealed it was embarking on a program to acquire nuclear-powered submarines. Cooperation United States and United Kingdom, like I said. So here's a really good picture of the um, Hobart class. There's a, it looks like an F-35 flying overhead there. They've got those too. They bought F-35 fighters. Uh, here is another angle of the ship. It looks very similar to our, uh, it's like a lightweight Aegis class uh, destroyer, you know, is, is kind of how I put it. But, you know, it's got the 76 millimeter gun there on the bow. Is that 76? It might be five inch. It looks pretty small, so I'd say 76. Anyway, um, high rate of fire, though, and they're going to put these Tomahawk launchers on here. The cool thing about the Tomahawk box launchers is they're a plug and play. You can just crane them on board if you want to connect them to your fire control system and you're good to go. It doesn't take long to install these launchers. We did that to the Iowa for the first Gulf War. Put a couple Tomahawk box launchers topside of it amidships, you know, four facing fo uh, port, four facing starboard, and you're good to go. I imagine they're going to do something similar to that like this. They're not going to cut... I wouldn't expect them to anyway, cut this ship apart and put a VLS anywhere. They don't need to do that. They can just put these box launchers, you know, aft of the uh, bridge work here. And there's a good, you can see there's space in between here. They, I guess they would have to make room for them. Something's got to get out of the way, uh, but they don't need to cut holes. They don't need to cut steel. All right. Let's uh, read more from the piece. It says, I'm announcing, uh, who, who are we talking about? This is Morrison. Okay, this is like the Prime Minister of Australia. He says, I'm announcing, in, in addition to the acquisitions announced as part of the 2024 structure plan, that we'll be enhancing our long range strike capability, including Tomahawk cruise missiles, to be fielded on Royal Australian Navy Hulbert class destroyers. The joint uh, air to surface standoff missiles, extended range. Oh, they get the ER ones. Those, those can go like 500 miles. They're crazy. You don't even have to leave Australia to bomb China anymore. Congratulations. <laughs> the Royal Australian Navy has only three Hobart-class destroyers, which it received between 2017 and 2020. These 7,000-ton displacement warships are a very modern design and presently being optimized to primarily for air defense duties. Uh, the addition of Tomahawks will provide the, provide the vessels with a powerful new long-range land attack maritime strike capability, increasing their ability to project naval power in general over considerable distances. Uh, this will also give the Australia new anti-access area denial deterrent and could deploy in response to more specific challenges of its national security interest from potential opponents such as China. And uh, so the AFP agency broke this news. Let's see if we can, uh, they have a little blow up here of a Tomahawk. For those of you that haven't seen uh, a detailed drawing of a Tomahawk, it's funny, whenever I was in the Navy in the 1990s, this was all classified. You could not put anything like this on the internet. But hey, it's a whole new whole new decade, whole new hell, century. So this is the Tomahawk land attack missile here. It's designed for long distance precision strikes, can be redirected in flight. I would have gotten in trouble telling you that 20 years ago. This is crazy. Infrared camera, GPS terrain, uh, referencing area sensors, yeah. 
45, 45, 450 kilogram unitary warhead or munition dispenser can do both. We had a special one in a Tomahawk in the first Gulf War, which was like Tomahawk 1.0, that instead of having an explosive warhead, it um, put out wire, like uh, like almost like command wire that we use on the torpedoes. So reams and reams of this copper wire would just spill out of the belly section here of this. Um, and the idea was to have it short out power lines that were above ground. We used that in the first Gulf War. It was a special version of the Tomahawk. Anyway, fuel cell, there's the uh, engine. That, that's the booster to kind of get it up into flight. Then this booster falls off a few seconds into the flight, falls away. And then these wings, when it's in the can, uh, canister, the wings are folded in. And it's not until after it's shot that you see these things pop out. If you look at a high speed, slow motion shot of the launch of any Tomahawk, you can see these things get deployed as soon as it leaves the tube. Yeah. Anyway, so what do you guys think about that? Australia is going ham, man. They're building nuclear, or not, I guess they are building and buying nuclear submarines and these uh, Tomahawks at $1.5 million a piece uh, made by Raytheon. It was carbon chaff, chaff, chaff. Oh, you guys are talking about that, that warhead, the wires that were coming out. Yeah, I don't know a lot of details about it. I just know that that was a, it was a pretty cool idea to shoot a missile, a cruise missile that didn't have any explosives on it. It was just going to short out power lines. Yeah. Time to buy Raytheon stock. Yeah, no kidding. Raytheon, General Atomics, General Dynamics Electric Boat. If I were to give any financial advice, which I'm not allowed to, by the way, buy those stocks if you have any money at all. All three of those are going to go up based, based alone on this Australian deal. Now, take a look at the stock price because those in the know bought the stock a week ago, right? It may be really overvalued right now, but... And I have to say again that I'm not allowed to give you financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't listen to me. Anyway, yeah, so this is really cool that they're, uh, that they're going all out.